Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a friend of the Epic Something project and uh, they've invited me to do a little piece on some of my favourite garden wildlife. There's a bit of a clue right here in my pot. It's a lovely male red mason bee. I'm going to let him go straight away now because behind me are some buzzing solitary bee hotels and I'm going to give you some top tips on how you can make your own. Here it goes. Hey, off he goes. So I've tried to make it easy for you to see what we need here. First of all, what did you have? Chopped tomatoes, beans, spaghetti hoops, who knows? The tins are useful, don't need to throw those away. I went out on my walk and collected from the nettle patches, which are still, uh, the nettles are still quite low. These are last year stems and actually they're nice and hollow and the holes are about three or four millimetres wide, which is just the right size from some of our smaller solitary bees. Some bamboo canes from last year's gardening, they're dried out, also hollow. And this is some fennel stems. Fennel's a great plant, the kids love to nibble on it. It's got hollow stems at the end of the season. And when it's in flower, it's an absolute magnet for uh, bees and hoverflies and wasps in the height of summer. So those are our materials, a bit of string as well and some screws, and then here we are with the tools that we're gonna need. I'll do a demo with some bamboo. It's quite useful if you can clamp it. So I've got this little worktop, workmate thing here. I've tied it into a bundle with string, trying to cut one piece of bamboo at a time it is infuriating. I'm gonna see if I can cut almost a tin load in one go. Oh, I've got my little helper here with a hacksaw, small tooth saw, much easier for like this for doing sawing with. Oh, don't forget the tape measure. It's a good idea just to measure how long or how deep your can is and therefore how long your bits of bamboo are gonna be. 10 centimeters is your answer. So you can measure 10. Hacksaw please, half off there. Doesn't need to be too precise. And then I'm gonna get sawing. Now, I may not keep you watching all of, cutting through all of these, but conveniently there are a few here that I've prepared earlier. Joseph's arranging them there nicely. Thank you, Joseph. Got caught in the string. That's a good one, yeah. In fact, can you get me a tin ready? Grab a tin off the table and we are going to drill a hole in the bottom of that in a second. Just check if they fit. Do you want to check if they fit while I'm sawing through these? Check if what fits? If the bamboo fits into the tin. Yes, it does. It does, good, okay. All right, so we've got to fill the whole tin up, have we? Yes. All right. Nearly through, nearly through. Good, right, a whole load of bamboo beans is there. Whew. Back with the hacksaw. Now we need a drill. And we need a metal drill bit to start off with because before we fill our tin up, Um, we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of the tin. This is the easiest way to attach it. So I'm going to hold that upside down, put the drill over there, mind your supporting hand, and Joseph's going to pull the trigger and we're going to drill a hole in the tin. Ready, steady, go. That was easy. Keep drilling and pull out. Nice. Okay. Now, in comes a screw, we need a screw, we need a screwdriver and we're going to screw this tin to the wall in my nice sunny spot. Sunny is important, you've got to have 
the hottest spot in your garden because these bees love it hot. So I'm going to screw it into the wall here. You can screw it into a fence post, uh, wherever you like, as long as it, it'll take a screw and it doesn't cause any damage. Oh, there's a, there's a few mason bees buzzing around already and I haven't even filled the tin up yet with bamboo. And you'll find that once you've screwed it fully tight, that's locked on. That's not going anywhere. Good. And then all we need to do is collect up all our hollowed bamboo pieces. Make sure that you're using the cleanest entrance holes there. And just start filling them up. We're choosing sizes. The bamboo works perfectly for this. Oh, look at those bees buzzing around straight away. Hey, almost in and I haven't even finished. Look at that. We're choosing sizes that are somewhere between three, four to 10 millimeters in diameter. No bigger than that. We don't have bees that would use uh, uh, holes bigger than that in this country. There we go. Any more, Joseph? Right. So this is this is nesting habitat for our, some of our solitary bees. And in a minute, I'll take you over to the garden over there where we've got a little patch of wildflowers. We've got a mini pond and, and a lot of the other things that the solitary bees need for their knife. And some bare mud as well, because you'll notice from the holes on this here, that they close, they seal their chambers with a mixture of, sort of mud and clay and sometimes twigs. And then there's also resin bees that use wax or resin to close the chambers as well. All right, nearly there now. Have you got any more pieces? Uh, yes. Good, all right. So here's a few I prepared earlier. This is one made with nettle stems. As you can see, quite small apertures there. This is one made of fennel stems, a whole mixture from the larger ones, almost a centimetre across to three or four millimetres. And this is the bamboo. And I put them all up side by side to, to as an experiment to see which ones proved to be most popular. Right, so here we are in my little wildlife area of the garden here. It's an area where the kids aren't allowed to play football. Um, but as you can see, I've got some dandelions, weeds to many people, but these are the friends of the bees, full of nectar and pollen at this time of year. And the sun started to go a little bit now, so they're closing up. But earlier on, they were wide open and had honeybees, bumblebees and solitary bees coming to feed there. A little bit of cuckoo flower, a favorite of the orange tip butterfly, which you might see at this time of year, but it's also uh, got a good source of nectar and pollen for the solitary bees. And then if you come over this way a little bit, um, in the heat of the day, when the sun was shining, I was watching the bees coming down and having a little drink from the water here. And even some of the red mason bees collecting up some of the wet mud around the edge of the pond, which they're then using to seal up their chamber. So there's lots of the things that the bees need that I've made available, even in just a small patch of uh, my garden. Joseph, are you allowed to kick the ball over here? No, why not? Uh, because there's bees nesting. There's bees nesting. Well, the lawn got trashed in this wet winter we had. And as a result, the grass died back and we've ended up with a nice bit of bare patch of soil. It's now a bit hard baked, but it's a little bit loose as well. And if you look closely, there's some holes here. This one's got a little bit of spoil piled up around the edge of it. And I've not identified which bees are doing it yet. I hope it's uh, one of my early spring favorites, the Clark's Mining Bee. Uh, and they don't use the bee hotels, but they love a little bare patch of soil. And here they are digging down, excavating a nesting cavity where they are, which they'll provision with pollen, uh, nectar, and then lay eggs in. Um, uh, into, and when the eggs hatch, they'll end up, the larvae that hatch out will end up eating the pollen and the nectar that was provided for them. So I've had to do nothing here about, apart from not let the grass grow back. And um, we've got perfect little bit of habitat in a hot sunny place that the bees are attracted to too. So thumbs up for that. Okay, right. I don't know whether any of you noticed, but carefully positioned next to the solitary bee 
accommodation here is our bilberry tree or blueberry tree which it ha or shrub that happens this year to be in full flower we're hoping for lots of fruit but in fact in order for us to get the fruit we need some visits from the bees and these red mason bees have been busy here all day collecting pollen and it's only a short hop from there to the bee high-rise building here where they're making provisioning their nest cells so we've got bees coming and gathering pollen right next door to their uh, nesting chambers no time to waste and I'm guaranteeing a nice crop of berries with the help of the bees so that's all good yeah. so if you want to take this a little bit further you're going to need to get into some slightly more heavy duty kit I highly recommend this book covers all the bees that turn up in the UK loads of information and more importantly keys that help you identify to species level which isn't always readily doable in the field uh, you'll need some sample pots you need a net and sometimes you actually have to kill the bees in order to get them to identify them to species level that's not everybody's cup of tea I sometimes end up doing that so to make sure that I've actually recorded accurately the species that are turning up in my garden but this is just an idea of some of the kit that you might upgrade to if you really get into bees uh, and there's all sorts of information with the, from the wildlife trust bumblebee conservation and the bees wasps and ants recording scheme that you can find out um, more about our beneficial insects i like to think of them as